You know, often I wonder if I knew, I mean, really knew, like we're gonna talk about today, the effects of alcohol on my cellular and metabolic self, would I have still drank like a weekend warrior fish? My mom's words, not mine, all throughout my early 20s. And after pondering on this, I think it's pretty clear. Doesn't really matter because we have yet to master time travel and what's done is done. That being said, what you do today, here and now, most certainly does matter. And if you have a vested interest in your present day cellular function and health over time, AKA your longevity, this may be an interesting one to listen to. Oh, and that red wine in your hand right there doesn't have enough resveratrol to make a difference. Just saying. Yo, yo, yo. What is up? Welcome back to another week of How to Health. My name is Kevin. I run liftandbalance.com where we take aim at all things health and longevity and do it in an odd, weird, interesting, and highly sarcastic way. Today, we are talking about human civilization's literal pastime, drinking. Cue the Game of Thrones clips. That's what I do. I drink and I know things. And how the consumption of alcohol impacts our cellular and metabolic self in such a way that it likely accelerates the biological aging process. In other words, makes us older at the cellular level compared to our respective chronological age. And thus, by definition, derailing many of the longevity ambitions you may have. And I know, I know, there are Always the cases where a centenarian or 100 year old swears that a glass of whiskey a day and a cigarette, or a few, is the secret to their longevity. So let's just classify them up front as outliers and move on. Because those unique cases are not what this exploration is about today. We're going to be focusing in on some new data highlighting alcohol's impact on one of the most sacred components of our cellular cell. The instructions to our biological world. The double helix which sits atop the genetic kingdom. Our DNA. Because if you haven't been head down in the aging and longevity science, you may have not heard that DNA damage or the mutation and proliferation of our genome has been identified and mostly agreed upon as one of the key hallmarks of human aging. A phenomenon that naturally occurs as we accrue chronological years on this beautiful floating rock. And with it, the abundance of disease and dysfunction. So I think, most rational people would agree this ain't something we want to speed up. Bringing us to the topic we're here to discuss. Because accelerating DNA damage seems to be something up at the top of alcohol's resume. So let's take a moment and explore what actually happens when we drink a little too much. And I'm not talking about the side effects we all know about. Like becoming a professional dancer, an expert therapist, and taking a shower with your clothes on to save time on laundry. It's a good one, I know. I'm talking about what happens on the inside and why you should care. And this centers around the effects that ethanol or the main compound in alcohol delivers. So when we consume an alcoholic beverage, it first gets absorbed through the intestines and enters the bloodstream, making its way to the liver to be processed. Here, an enzyme called ADH breaks down the ethanol into acetaldehyde, a toxic intermediary product of alcohol metabolism. Here's where things begin to get interesting. We have another enzyme called ADLH2, which breaks down this toxic intermediary into benign compounds that could be used for other things throughout the body. But depending on the consumption rate and the quantity, this could take a while, leaving the toxic aldehydes lingering. And here's why that's no bueno for biological business. Because aldehydes happen to be highly reactive with DNA and proteins, forming something called DNA protein crosslinks, or DPCs, which block important enzymes in typical cell proliferation and maintenance processes causing these processes to malfunction. And as we know, the slope is rather slippery between malfunction, dysfunction, and disease. 
This is one of the reasons why alcohol consumption has been constantly linked to an unflattering list of aging accelerators, including telomere shortening, or the reduction of the protective caps on the end of chromosomes that protect DNA, increased oxidative stress, or free radical production, which induces a inflammatory flurry within. Speaking of that, more inflammation, which you know from all our other powwows, accelerates dysfunction throughout the body. Nutrient deficiencies, as heavy alcohol consumption has been shown to disrupt nutrient absorption and deplete the body of essential vitamins and minerals needed for cellular repair and maintenance. Not cool. I know. Liver damage further impairing the body's ability to detoxify and manage itself. Sleep disruption. If you have any tool to track your sleep, the changes in key metrics such as resting heart rate, heart rate variability, and deep sleep time are straight up eye-opening. And on top of all this, cognitive decline, impairing neuronal function and making the all-important blood-brain barrier more permeable. And this is just a short representation of the long list. Now, with that said, it is very important to note most of these are byproducts of extensive and chronic consumption, not a few social drinks a week. However, going back to those DNA damage conversations earlier, this is probably not something that you want to add too much extra fuel to. And the reasons why are highlighted in this new study, which aimed to understand how cells repair those DNA protein crosslinks caused by naturally produced aldehydes during gene transcription. Here, researchers used a technique called DPC sequencing to investigate the link between aldehyde accumulation and DNA damage in premature aging disease patients. These are patients that have genetic predispositions to aldehyde accumulation and as a unfortunate byproduct experience accelerated aging. Total bummer, I know. Observing first that a TRC or transcription coupled repair complex was responsible for repairing this DPC damage. From here, they leveraged a mouse model with intentional deficiencies in both aldehyde clearance and the TCR complex to see how it would impact the symptoms of aging, finding that it did in fact accelerate them, ultimately suggesting an association between premature aging disease and aldehyde accumulation, which begs the question if Aldehyde-induced DNA damage may play a role in the aging process for healthy individuals too. And in particular, individuals who partake in habits that increase the production of aldehydes throughout their body, like alcohol and cigarette consumption. Now, another important note. There's still a lot of research that needs to be done to fully understand all of the nuances this may or may not have on the average intelligent walking ape. Understanding that we also cannot overlook the individual genetic and metabolic differences between us, which can certainly make one individual more or less susceptible than another. That being said, let's spend the last few minutes here talking about what an ideal moving forward relationship with alcohol may look like. If you have that longevity thing in mind, of course. Of course. And I think we could all quickly agree here that heavy consumption to the tune of multiple drinks per day is not feasible. Rewind and rewatch for all the reasons why. Which brings us to moderate consumption or a few drinks a week. What's the deal with that? Well, let's start with ethanol or that main compound in alcohol and highlight that it has no identified biological benefit in our body. According to what we know, we don't need it, nor do we get any enhancements from it. So it is in fact a net negative from a biological standpoint. Now, you may propose that the benefits are psychological, allowing you to relax, let loose, and let the good times roll. To which I would say, um, maybe? but there are other and much better ways to do that without the baggage. However, the decision to drink is yours and yours alone. 
And it is pretty unlikely that a few drinks every once in a while is going to lead to your imminent demise. Even the CDC, the health overseeing body that we all trust so much, says two drinks for men and one drink for women per day shouldn't break the biological bank. But as we know, most tend to stack those drinks into a three day or so weekend. So what should it be? What should you do when how much can or should you indulge? I'll tell you right now, there is no perfect answer. Well, there is, but you might not like it because there are a lot of variables at play and each individual weighs these variables different. So to get to your answer, maybe start by asking yourself a few questions. Why do I like to drink? When do I like to drink? Does it actually make me feel good? Does it help me make good decisions? Is it improving my life? And do I like how it makes me feel the next day? When I personally started exploring these questions in my mid 20s, I can tell you that the last four quickly outweighed the first two in importance and became the guiding reasons why I cut off my relationship with alcohol more and more in the years to follow. I personally like feeling and operating at my best. And that was definitely not happening when and after I drank. This conclusion was only enhanced after seeing what it did to the most restorative, regenerating, detoxifying period of our 24 hour day. Sleep, straight up destroying all of my key metrics as told by my trusty aura ring. That being said, you need to identify your criteria and your goals. This powwow is just a little more intel you now have at your disposal to make that best decision for you. Because as we know, you and only you have the ability to own your health. Oh, and if anyone ever gives you the, but it's a great source of resveratrol line, let them chug the bottle of wine. Grab yourself some phytonutrient packed fruit and call them the next day to check in on their hangover. Don't ask me how I know.